Okay, if you're watching this, it means that time has come when you're running all of your different statistical tests and you've got all the data, lots and lots of data. Probably the hard part was organizing it into something you could actually analyze and making it something useful. Now, let's put it into a beautiful table and let's show it off. So remember, tables are sources for summaries. There's not room for all of your raw data in the very, very valuable print space in a journal. So first of all, you're going to want to number your APA table consecutively. So every table in your paper gets a consecutive number starting with one. It should have a descriptive title and you should use headings and subheadings as needed. Include measures of central tendency spread and sample size and include the results of your statistical test. So name that test right there. And what you're going to end up with is a descriptive section and an inferential statistics section. And the information you report depends on your test, but in most cases it's very similar. So you're going to have a test statistic. Here they are for the various tests that we normally use. Oops, regression got left out. There's degrees of freedom, a p-value. Um, and for that regression value, that could be a capital R or a lowercase r. I'm seeing it both ways. I tend to see it as capital. Um, and you're going to also need an alpha value. And one special case um, for ANOVA, you've got two degrees of freedom, a degrees of freedom within and a degrees of freedom between. This layout for a t-test allows you to compare the means of two groups. Note that my heading and my subheading describe my IV and my IV treatment groups and egg mass density is listed above the mean, standard deviation, and sample size lines because it's the DV we're describing in this table. The layout for ANOVA is similar, but now I'm comparing the means of more than two groups. Also note that I put the unit with the heading so that I'm not listing it over and over and over in the subheading. For a chi-square, you're working with data that does not have a mean, rather you've got some observed bulk number, some ratio you expect to find, and if there's no difference between the groups, those ratios should, you know, you should see 40% of the total number, and that's your expected value. So you're going to have your observed, your expected, if there was no difference based off your null hypothesis. And this is just a format I've come up with. From what I can tell, there's a lot of different formats that exist for chi-square. We're going to have this one work for our purposes this year, even though it's not quite as streamlined as some of the ones I've seen used in actual papers. For correlation, the format is even simpler. There's no subheadings required. You're just summarizing the central tendency spread and spread of your variables. Your sample size actually should be the same for both of these so you can get rid of that and put the sample size up with your title if you'd like for a more streamlined table. And for those occasional adventurous ones that want to try their hands at a multiple regression, you can put your various coefficients and coefficients of determination and your various variables um, within the grid between the two variables you're describing. So see this one would be for variable number 4 and 5. So variables 4 and 5 would have that coefficient of determination. And you can still sneak in a little about central tendency and spread by aligning them right below the variable numbers. And if you're feeling really fancy, you can sneak in a little note about significance using asterisks. So that's a very, very quick um, examples of the different table formats you can use. Hope that helps.